Welcome back folks, it's Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today we're going to be drawing a Mosasaurus skeleton. So this has been a really highly requested how to draw video and I'm going to be trying to um, endeavor my best to teach you guys how to draw it. I got my new eraser here and my Graph Gear 500 mechanical pencil for all of you who are new and are wondering what kind of mechanical pencil I'm using but really any drawing device will work. So the skeleton actually is a little bit more challenging, I would say, than drawing the um, the the mosasaurus with skin. But we still have to put an outline even when doing a skeleton. So we're gonna put this little shape for the head. Got a neck right here. Body is gonna be right about there. Tail is basically gonna curve. So you can't really see it that well. I, actually, I might curve it a bit over there. It's got back fins. We're just, I'm just doing this basically to get the proportions right. Put in front flippers. I'm actually using a Mosasaur skeleton model that I have as the reference to draw this. So yeah, we're going to start by refining the head a bit. I know the reference, or the the quick outline here doesn't look like much, but it will very soon. We are going to basically make a line slowly curving down. It's got a very, not really crocodilian type face, but it's quite narrow. The Mosasaurus jaw, or the top part of the jaw. I just got a new drawing table that I've set up in my garage. It's proved very nice. It's got a nice white top. And I've been do, I've, I'm planning to do all my future videos on this table. I'm sort of trying to build my own Danny the Dinosaur Drawer studio. It's in the making though. It's in the making. Eventually I'll have more than, maybe more than one camera to get some different angles and stuff. Definitely I need to get a better video editor in the future. So yeah, right now we're putting this first cavity, which is basically where the eye is going to be. Might have made it a little bit too big. It looks a little freakish, that size. It's about this. Yeah, it's about that size. It's got another cavity here. Let's put that in. There's also a picture online that looks very similar to this drawing. So I do recommend you guys sometimes, if you have something that you'd like me to draw, I'm, I, I don't really find, I find some good reference images but they're a little hard to find. So if you have a specific reference image you like, or if it's like a dinosaur from Jurassic World, the game, then I would highly recommend you take a screenshot of your dinosaur in the game if you have it. I understand that having like you down level 40 would be quite difficult. But yeah, if you find a picture, please send it to Danny the Dinosaur Drawer at gmail.com. And I will tr I will use that reference image if it's a good one because it has to be a nice angle so that I can see the whole the whole thing. So right now we're working on the putting the mirrored basically the other side. You can see through it obviously, but we have to just shade in shade inside. If you guys ever get the chance to go to a museum, I highly recommend you go to the dinosaur section. I'm sure you already have seen quite a lot of of dinosaurs on display, but you should try at least one to take like a mini sketchbook and try like to actually sketch the dinosaur 
skeleton that's on display. It could be a T-Rex. There's plenty of those all the time. But it could also be like a Mosasaur skeleton. I know they're quite scarce. But it's great practice to to draw um, 3D things. Because a lot of people get used to drawing stuff from books and stuff from online. And that would be me. I'm not. I'm really good at drawing stuff from books or from pictures, but I'm really bad at drawing stuff that that's in front of me, like an apple on a tape or s something like that. But it's really good practice. It really helps your eye become more of an artistic eye. So if you are, if you have the chance to go to a museum, I highly recommend you take your sketchbook. Just do a few sketches. See how they turn out. I've done it a few times. I did a T-Rex drawing once. Believe me, it's not going to look that good <laughs> as um, as if you're looking at a reference image. I did a Allosaurus skeleton drawing. That one was a little better. See, I'm, just, I'm putting a little bit of shading here on the skull to make it look a little more realistic. That looks pretty good. Here it's sort of got like a little indentation, but not really a, f a cavity. So yeah, let's work on the bottom bottom jaw. It goes in a bit here. There's so many explanations on how sea creatures get um, fossilized. It has to be, for something to get fossilized, basically it has to be in a big mixture of silt and mud and the right mixture of sand and stuff like that. So that's why there's so few fossils because it's really hard to, um, I mean there's a lot of clam fossils, but for the circumstances to be right is really unusual. It usually has to be like a flood or something. See, let's put a little bit more refinement into the bottom jaw and now we can add my favorite part is the teeth it's got large teeth unlike Lip Lipiridon the teeth that are long all the way almost to the back Lipiridon has like really big teeth in the front but then they get really small as they get toward the back the Mosasaurus just has a lot of teeth People all, all the time are, scientists all the time are calling Mosasaurus the Tyrannosaurus of the seas, which is true because it's got like a huge head and jaws and huge teeth as well. So that's pretty good for the head. I'm sorry for this shadow that's coming across there. That's from my tripod. But yeah, let's continue on. We spent enough, t way enough time on that part of the body. We are going to now put in the spinal column basically and curve it. The tail is going to curve right about there. We can erase some of the lines we do not need. Basically we're going to put all the little vertebrae here that stick out. I'm sure there's a specific number, but I'm just going to be drawing them random. Like one time I did do a T-Rex skeleton where I counted like how many vertebrae was in the neck to be really perfectionist. But with with this drawing, we don't really need to do that. It's also got like a little knob that sticks out next to each little... I'm not sure what they... I'm not going to call them spikes. I really should look this up before I do my video. They're like little knobs basically that stick out of each vertebrae. I don't know, like at Thanksgiving if you've seen your parents or, or if you're cooking the turkey, you probably they usually put the neck in as well. And the, you'll get to see the vertebrae of the turkey, which is similar to what this Mosasaurus vertebrae looks like. So this is one section of the vertebrae right there. 
basically you want to section each one off like so skeletons have, have always proved to be hard to draw than actually than actual um, realistic drawings with skin and claws and well I mean you see the claws with the skeleton but like hands and legs and stuff are easier to draw in real life or like when drawing it with skin the dinosaur then if you're drawing the skeleton and the skeleton I get really confused with the ribs and all the different vertebrae so there we have the neck vertebrae now we can put the shoulder blade in shoulder blade is going to be right about there it's like a disc we're going to put some shading along here Originally, I was going to do, I sat down, I, was, I said, I'm going to do this as a time-lapse video. But I said, oh no, I've already done one of those, and everyone's going to comment, Danny, why didn't you make this a tutorial? So, that's why this is a tutorial, not a time-lapse. A lot of times, I sit down to draw a time-lapse video, and I say, oh, the subscribers would actually like, <laughs> like a tutorial better. Because time-lapse videos are quite a lot easier for me to do so I don't have to talk and stuff and I can play music as well because like YouTube will, will uh, not really sue me but they'll alert my channel that if I put like a popular song in the background they'll recognize it and say oh you can't put that video up because you have copyright content of like so, such and such a song so that's why I can't really play music but I love playing music when I draw I'm not sure about you guys it really inspires me I feel like art and music go together they, they interlock basically it's like that's when when I make a timeless video I love to put music see so yeah, here we have these little discs little circles right before we do the each finger I'm going to put a uh, little line so we get them to look nice. It's got like sort of a thumb right about here. Really short, but you won't, like assuming that it looks like a, like a flipper, you won't, that thumb won't really stick out. I have my Mosasaur skeleton with me here in the room. As you can see right here, there's the thumb right there. So yeah, this is basically what the, I'm trying to get the arm to come off the skeleton. That's basically what we're going to be drawing now. Next, each little, got a lot of little segments here in each finger. I want to sort of curve them. As you can see, this one is a little shorter. This one would be the longest. Right about there, they get longer, this one gets shorter, there's the thumb. The little segments, unfortunately it does not have claws on the end. Very few sea creatures have like claws on the end. I think maybe sea turtles have claws on the end of their flippers. It's quite unusual. Even in prehistoric sea creatures so you just make little rectangles basically connect them together taper it off there Here we'll put the next this would be the pointer finger I guess it's hard to tell because the, the hand is backwards I want to put a little bit of shading give it a little bit more depth. Now we can put the thumb in. It's got a very short thumb with only around three segments. Actually not one, two, three, four. Got four. So we'll connect that in there. As you can see I'm I pretty much followed what this thing looked like. Let's move it out of the way. Actually we might need it later. But next we're going to be drawing the um 
the, sh the chest or shoulder blades extension. It's basically like I'm not sure what this bone is called. Is it the? It might be the collarbone. So it could be the collarbone, but I'm not sure. So. <laughs> Let's put the other shoulder blade, it's going to be on the opposite side. We'll have to put the ribs, on. the ribs start right about here, on the other side. So this, these are the things that make drawing a skeleton so very difficult. It's got ribs on both sides. Basically you have to mirror every, every bone on each side. It's weird because sometimes humans are born with an odd number of ribs. That would be kind of weird. <laughs> so yeah, let's put the other... With the Mosasaurus, it wouldn't really matter if he had an odd number of ribs. He's so many already. So let's put the other... I might call it hand, or... Should I call it flipper? Because on dinosaurs, it's definitely hand, but... The ocean, I guess, would be considered flipper. It's really weird because we probably don't have a very good idea what Mosasaurus look like in real life. Because if you can see like a dolphin or whale skeleton, it does not look at all like what the real thing looks like. So Mosasaurus could have even had like a uh, a whale tail. Probably not because of the length. It's quite it's got quite a long tail that looks like it was meant to propel it forward. But it is a possibility that it could have like a whale type tail. I know a lot of you guys didn't like my how to draw an accurate Mosasaurus. A lot of people said that that was not accurate, the drawing I did. But I, I literally searched accurate Mosasaurus and that was one of the pictures that came up was that the picture I used as a reference image for that tutorial. So I was, I just was, I just put in the title, what it was, what the reference image was called. It was called How to, oh, no, it's not called How to Draw, it was just like a, a picture. And it said, Accurate Mosasaurus, so. I titled it Accurate Mosasaurus, but then everyone said, oh, that's not accurate, so. I guess it's not, but then when it comes to drawing dinosaurs, you can't really say something's accurate or not. I mean, to some extent you can. It's obvious like the raptors in Jurassic Park were too large, and the Spinosaurus in Jurassic Park 3 was not accurate. But I would say the T-Rex, besides it being a little too big, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park was pretty much what the real thing would have looked like, in my eyes at least. So yeah, right now we're gonna segment off each vertebrae. Now it might take a lot of work, but with enough pa patience and time, you can make a masterpiece. My best drawings were the drawings that took me a few days to do. I would like work on it for about an hour, leave, and then the next day come back and work on it a bit more. Because each day when you look at your drawing, you will find something. <laughs> Say, why didn't I, I should have fixed that. So I saved myself that trouble by just putting, uh, taking my time on the drawing and doing it over a span of like five days or something. I do that mo when I'm doing like a portrait or something. Uh, yeah, I'll usually take a few days to do it. If not a month. Like one, some take really long to do, especially if I'm not inspired really. With dinosaurs, I can just sit down and do a nice dinosaur. But when I'm actually doing a portrait, it takes a long time. So basically, you want to put a little bit of shading on in the under part of the, each vertebrae. You can con continue the ribs up to here, and here's where they get smaller. So basically the most source is the widest right about here. 
Still has the few ribs, but they don't connect to the bottom rib cage. I see like some T-Rex skeletons with the bottom rib cage, but it's quite unusual for them to be displayed like that. They people usually display them without the bottom ribs. Like I've I have a T-Rex skeleton with me today actually. I have lots of skeletons. And I'll just unfasten the here would be like the bottom ribs from the T-Rex. The most source actually does have that as well. As you can see right here. Of course the skeleton, they're not really connected in the skeleton model, but in real life they would be connected like this. But it's a very nice model of the Mosasaurus. I might do a review on it in the future. <laughs> I thought about doing that before reviewing toys, but I'm not sure if you guys would like that or not. Reviewing dinosaur toys, because it's quite a large selection out there. I usually find, I don't like dinosaur toys like as in the like little plasticky toys. I like the skeleton models the best. Like my room looks like a museum. It's got skeletons everywhere. I like to hang up. I have like a pterodactyl skeleton that I hang from my ceiling. I also have a Psychosaurus. No, Elasmosaurus. It's an Elasmosaurus skeleton hanging as well from a wire. So that all looks very cool. So if you wanted to go the extra mile, you'll put in the ribs on the opposite side course all colored in all filled in because of the shading like so might confuse you a bit I don't sure if you guys saw my time-lapse t-rex skeleton video but that one took about 40 minutes so I was really rushing, and it's a big drawing. I did that really fast. Like 40 minutes might seem like a long time, but for a T-Rex skeleton, <laughs> and I'm not sure if you've seen it, it's quite, it's not like really detailed, but it's pretty, yeah, I'd call it detailed. And for 40 minutes, it's pretty fast. Like right now, we're at around 23 minutes. And we've, we're not done yet. And this is looking pretty good. We still have to do a bit more. But I feel like the most of our skeleton is a little less detailed than T-Rex skeleton. Because we have to T-Rex skeleton legs and feet. That's really difficult. <laughs> drawing the feet. And then you have to... The skull is quite difficult as well. So right here we, is where the hips are. Got a weird bone structure here. It's got like I'm not sure if you guys want to see it. right here we have the my skeleton model. It's got like that the hips connected right about there. I also have a few reference images. I'm not <laughs> relying just on the skeleton model. I'm I have a few reference images to make it more accurate. Although the skeleton model is very nice, it's not 100% perfect. So, I usually do that like when I'm drawing a dinosaur from Jurassic World the game, I'll have like few reference images images of it out so I can get a more of a 3D look. I want to be able to see what it looks like from all angles. Speaking of, once I reach 3,000 subscribers, which I hope won't be won't be too far away, once I do, I'm going to be planning to draw Udon for you guys. Um, Udon or Mosasaurus from Jurassic World the Game versus um, Megalodon from Jurassic World the Game. So it's your choice. I might do a specific video on <laughs> asking you guys which one you'd rather me do, or you can just comment below on this video. If you're watching this like months later, then 
I have no. You don't have. You don't need to because I probably have released both Gudon and how and Megalodon versus Mosasaurus by the time you see this. But if not, I would love to hear your comments. So right now we're doing the back flipper. It's got four. Call them fingers, I guess. And one thumb as well. It's a little shorter than the front. Than the front flipper. People say that, like, or scientists say that, um, Mosasaurus propelled itself with its tail, and used its well, these flippers to steer itself. Like Elasmosaurus probably used its flippers to propel itself forward. So yeah, if you guys, I'd love to see, read your comments. If you have any requests from Hungry Shark Evolution, Hungry Shark World, Jurassic World the Game, even maybe Jurassic Park Builder, even though it's a little harder to draw those because they're not that high quality. If you have any requests from those games, or maybe another video game, or from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom the trailer, I still have a few more of those to draw. Please comment below, and I'll get to them in the future. I have a bunch, and also I'm going to be doing a few, uh, I sort of like superheroes, I'm not sure if you guys do, like Marvel, DC, I might do a few of those, like maybe Batman, Superman, maybe a few Marvel characters. I've already done Thor, that was my first Marvel time-lapse videos time-lapse video. They're probably going to be mostly time-lapse because those take a little while and I can't really teach how to draw faces that well. So, but yeah, if you guys would li like me to draw something from uh, like any of your favorite Marvel characters, like Captain America, etc. or like a DC character like Superman, Batman, I do have a video of The Flash, maybe you've already seen it, that is about to come out. I'm still editing it, it's a time lapse. It's going to be my first DC, DC comic drawing on my channel. So if you've not already seen that, I highly recommend you check it out. But yeah, I love the comments and you guys always decide what I draw next. So I have a long list of drawings to do. We got a lot of Jurassic World the game. Because to be frank with you, that game has the best quality like dinosaurs of all the other games. I know people have commented Ark Survival, The Isle, etc. But Jurassic World the game I feel has the, the nicest ones to draw. And the list of, they have like, I don't know, it's, it's like 200, 200 different creatures. Bunch of Ice Age creatures and aquatic creatures that I still haven't even tried to draw yet. So I'm going to have a few of those coming up. But yeah, if you guys would like me to do like a few more reviews or, I don't know, like random vlogs. Please comment your ideas below. I might, I'm eventually in the future, I'm going to do like a Danny the Dinosaur Draw Story type video. That would be fun. So right, now we just did the tail. It's a lot longer than it appears in this drawing, but it's sort of, it's curved. So that's why it's a little hard to see it. But yeah, you can, it's, I did that mainly because of the size of the paper. But feel free to make your tail go a little longer like it does in the skeleton model which actually has apparently fallen apart. I'll have to put on the arms later. But yeah, you can see the tail here is quite long. And here we have the head. Matches the size of this one pretty much. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. I know it's a little bit on the long side, but doing an accurate skeleton drawing generally will take a long time. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this, leave a like, and most importantly, share it with your friends on 
your social media like Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus. And if you've not already checked out my Google Plus community dinosaur art, I highly recommend you do so. And yeah, I'll see you guys later in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.